tomorrow. Oh, hello. I didn't feel you there. <laughs> You've caught me doing some mending. Can't waste a thing these days, can you? Make, do and mend. That's what they're telling us. Here, do you mend your clothes? No. Well, what do you do with them then? Oh, don't tell me you throw them away, do you? Ah, oh, my lord, what a scandal. Don't you know there's a war on? No. Well, let me tell you. Four years ago, on the 1st of June, 1941, they introduced clothes rationing. At first, they kept it a secret, so silly people didn't panic buy and stockpile. <laughs> I mean, it would do a thing like that anyway. And they did this because lots of material had become scarce. For example, stockings. Stockings were needed for parachutes. Wool and leather, well, that was needed for uniforms. And the government wanted to make sure Everyone would be able to afford a reasonable supply of decent clothing and footwear, not just those with plenty of money to spend. Rationing, or fair shares, is the way to prevent a shortage without interfering with full war production, they announced. Everyone was included, even the king, who had to put away white tie and tails for the duration. Even fabric and knitting wool at a point's value. So you had to have the right amount of coupons and your ration book and the money. This ration book here would get you roughly one complete set of clothing per year. Now a child's winter coat, that was 11 coupons. And for every new pair of socks you bought, you had to hand over one coupon. Boys wore shorts till they were around 13 years old anyway, and shorts only cost three coupons and a pair of long trousers. Well, they were six. <laughs> so my poor lad, he ended up wearing shorts for the old duration of the war, poor kid. Even underwear was rationed. Rubber was scarce too. So elasticated knickers were three coupons and French knickers like the ones on here without any elastic. Well, they're only two. And don't get me started on girdles. <laughs> My lord. Ships of steel for even keel need tons and tons of steel. Army trucks, if they're to hurdle, need the rubber of the girdle. The time has come, the gods have written, women now must bulge for Britain. <laughs> so, as you can see, the Battle of the Bulge wasn't just in the winter of 1944 then. And... Now we have learnt to make do and mend. They've even given us these pamphlets. My new best friend is Mrs. So-and-so. She helps us stretch out resources with a little bit of ingenuity and needlework. The idea is to help us housewives by giving us tips on how to be both frugal and stylish in harsh times of rationing. There's plenty of thrifty design ideas and advice on reusing old clothing. We're taught how to make pretty decorative patches to cover holes in worn clothes and unpick jumpers to make them more chic and alternative and turn men's clothes into women's. She has even taught us how to defend ourselves against a menace that is even worse than Mr Hitler himself, the clothes moth. Mrs So-and-so gives us advice on how to repair our clothes and household linen. How to take a scrap of fabric and turn it into new garments or how to take two worn out dresses and turn them into a new one. I've got two here. I was thinking of putting them together. What do you think? Did you know you can add layers of fabric as patches to children's shorts to stop them wearing out too quickly, just like this leaflet shows? Or you can remove and re-knit a worn out sock heel. It's not always just about function, neither. There's instructions on how to make accessories out of unlikely materials, like brooches out of wire scraps to brighten up clothes that people are bored of wearing again and again and again. You can make underwear from parachute silk, you know. You can use tea towels or curtains to make dresses, old blankets to make coats, or you could boil down flower sacks to get dress fabric. You can cut down children's clothes. You can cut down adults' clothes to make children's clothes, I should say. And then you can turn the children's clothes into baby clothes. 
but now it's all over. I've got to admit, I'm a little bit worried. My husband Joe is going to be coming back from the fighting soon and he's going to find his wardrobe empty with nothing to wear because I've cut up all his suits and shirts and pyjamas into clothes for myself and the children. Oh dear, whatever will I do? Anyhow, now you know. Waste not, want not. So, what are you going to do next time you get a hole in your socks? That's right, my dears. You're going to darn it using one of these. And you rip a hole in your shirt, that's right, you will get a needle and you will mend it. Never forget, when times are tough and there's nothing new to be had, listen to Mrs. So-and-so. Make do and mend.